Hello guys, in this lesson, we want to add the register page and register functionality to the project. So after clicking on the login link, you're going to see a link here. When you click on it, you will see the register page that you can register a new user with it and log in to the website. Let's see how we can do it. Here we have everything that we need to do on this lesson. Let's start by adding the register page component. Let's go to the code inside the front end folder, SRC folder pages, right click and create a new folder with the name of register. Then right click on it and create a new file with the name of register page.js and another file with the name of register page at module the CSS for its CSS styles. Let's close the explorer and here inside the register page.js, let's write RFC for creating a functional component, save it. Now let's add it to the app routes. Click on the app routes.js and here inside the routes, let's duplicate the last route, that is the login route, and change it to register. And for its elements, let's use the register page component and it will be automatically added here. Now, if you go to the browser and here on the address bar, let's write register and press enter. And here we are going to see the register page. So our component is successfully created. Let's see where we are. We just created the component and we just add it to the app routes. Now let's add its link to the login page. Let's go to the code from the explorer, from the pages, login and login page.js. Here after the button, I want to add a link to the register page. I don't want to create a separate link for the register. I want the user to go to the login page. And here I want to show text that says new user question mark and the link to the register page. Let's do it here. First of all, let's add a link from the react router DOM. Okay, link is added. Now here after the button, let's write what we are supposed to write for having a link. Here we go. We just created a div with a class of classes.register. So we need to create a CSS for this one. Here we just added a text, new user, a no break space, ampersand, and BSP semicolon. So this just puts an empty space here and this link that has the register here text that goes to the register page. And if it has the return URL, passes the return URL to the register page. Otherwise, it just doesn't set anything after the question mark. We can even cut this question mark and put it here. Because if we don't have a return URL, we don't want to send any query parameters to the register page. So an empty text is enough. Now, if we go to the browser, we'll see that we have this text and the register here link that moves us to the register page. Now let's come back and give it a simple CSS to put it on the middle. Let's go to the code, open the explorer and go to the login page module CSS. we we'll scroll down and write the register class like this. Set its display to flex, justify content center and align items center. So it will be centered both vertically and horizontally. Now, if we go to the browser, we'll see it more beautiful. It is aligned with the button. Now let's go to the register page and see where we are. We successfully added the link to the login page, but we didn't finish the register page component and its CSS. So let's work on the register page itself. Let's go to the code, close the login page, CSS CSS file and login page JS file. Close the app routes. Here, first of all, let's add all the imports that we need. Let's start by using the use form hook and using the function and states it returns. We're just getting handle submit register get values and the form state and inside it it's errors from the use form hook just like the login page here i want to write a dummy submit function at the end we need to add a register function inside our auth hook and call it from here but currently since we didn't implement it we just leave it empty here on the return part first of all i want to remove this register and set its class name to classes.container and inside it, I want to add another div with a class of classes.details. So this will be our whole box and this will be the small register box that we put on the middle. Let's add the title of register here. Just use the title component with the title of register and let's add the form here. 
you just have a form that is on submit event uses the handle submit from the use form and when everything is okay it will call the submit function here be defined and we set the no validate attribute here because we don't want the default html validation to be enabled because we want to use our own validation okay now that we have our form here let's add the inputs one by one the first input is for the name of the user here we go. This is the input component that we created and it's inside the components slash input slash input. We set its type to text, it's labeled to name and we spread it the register function with the name of name. It is required and I set its min length to be five. If you don't like your username to have min length limitation, you can set it to zero or any number you want. Now let's go to the browser. As you can see, we have the name input beautifully placed here. What is filling the whole page we're gonna make it small when we jump into the css now let's continue adding other inputs let's go to the code here after this input let's add the email input Here we go. We have an input with the type of email. Its label is equal to email. Its name is email2. It's required. And just like the login page, we have this regular expression pattern for validating email structure. So if the structure of the email is not valid, it's going to show email is not valid. Oh, I have a typo here. Let's fix it. Okay. And for the error, we are going to pass the errors related to the email input. Errors are coming from form state dot errors. Let's Let's go to the browser. Here we go. Let's go to the next input that is for the password. The type is password, label is password with the capital P, name is password, required, mean length limitation of five, so at least it should be five character, and the errors that will be passed here from the errors.password. We also need another input for the confirm password. Let's write it. Here we go. This one is a little bit tricky. Everything is exactly the same, but we have a validate event here. Every time we write something inside the confirm password, this validate function will be called and the value of the input will be passed here. So if it's not equal to the value of the password, it's going to return passwords do not match error. It means the password and the confirm password does not match. Otherwise, if they are equal, it's going to return true. So if the validation is true, no no error will be shown for the confirm password and the rest is exactly the same like other inputs okay let's add the address input okay type of text label of address name of address is required with the mean length of 10 and the error that is equal to errors dot address okay now let's add the button Okay, added our button component with the type of submit and with the text of register. So now if you go to the browser, you'll see the name, email, password, confirm password and the address. Currently, I want to add another text here and a link that goes to the login page with the return URL. So first of all, we need to get the return URL inside the register component. Go to the top. So first of all, let's add the use search params from the React Router DOM. Now by using this use search params, we can get the return URL query string. Here make some empty lines and write this. Cons inside the square bracket, put the params and use the use search params hook in front of it. Now on the next line, we need to get the return URL from these params and set it inside return URL constant. Here we go. This is our constant that we are going to set it by getting the return URL from the query params. Now that we have this return URL, we can go down here after the button component. We can write the link to the login page. Okay, we have a div, the class of login with the text of already a user, space, a link to the login page with the return URL. Once again, we can put this question mark here. Okay, now let's go to the browser. As you can see, we have this login here button. If we go here and put a question mark with the return URL of, for example, slash cart. And if we click on the register page, as you can see, we have the return URL here. Now, if we come back, we already have the return URL here. So we 
it works. Now that we have all the visuals ready, let's work on its CSS. Let's go to the code, open the register page module CSS, and let's start with the container. Display a flex, center both horizontally and vertically, so everything that's inside the container will be put on the middle. Now we just need to make this details div a little bit smaller. So let's write dot details and set its width to 25 rem so now if you go to the browser we'll see the details part on the middle beautifully let's work on the form and make it a column and at the end let's work on the login link and put it on the middle now let's see it in the browser. As you can see, our register page is ready visually. But what about the functionality? That's what we want to do on the next step. But let's see where we are. We just added the CSS to the register page. Now we need to add the register function inside the user service and register function inside the use auth hook. Then we need to add it to the register page and we can add register API to the user router. But you know, I want to make this register API first. Then can the user service to it so let's go to the code from the explorer backend src routers and user router here scroll down before the generate token response make some space first of all let's create the api at its first line we want to get the user inputs from the request body name email password and address of the user on the next step we try to check if the email of the user is not already inside the database because you cannot register two users with the same email so let's find the user with the email okay now we need to verify if this user is inside the database then we need to return bad request with a message Okay, we check if the user is available, we send a response with the status of bad request that is 400 and we say the user already exists, please log in. Then we return the user outside of this handler and we don't continue down. Now after this if we know that the user with this email is not inside the database. So just like how we did inside the config, database config. We need to hash the password of the user. So we need these password hash salt rounds. So let's copy this constant, go to the user router and paste it here. Let's go to the register API. After this if, let's create the encrypted password by using bcrypt.hash. Here we go. We are using bcrypt.hash just like the database config. We are passing password that the user entered in the input box and password hash salt rounds that is just a number you can write like 10 okay but i'd like to give it a meaningful name now on the next line we just need to create the user object like this for the email i want to use email to lowercase because i want all of my emails have the same lowercase style and for the password, I'm going to use this encrypted password. It's better to say hashed password. Let's change its name to hashed password because hashing and encrypting is two different things. When you hash something, you cannot decrypt it. You can just compare it. It's different from encrypting. Now on the next line, I want to create this new user. Here we create the user by using the user model dot create and passing this new user object to it. And if you ask why I'm using the result here, because after creating the user, we are going to get the user from the database that has the user ID, because on this level, we don't have the database ID, but we need to send it inside the generate token response. And this result has the ID coming from the database. So now on the next line, just need to write response.send and generate the token response just like the login and make the user logged in. Here we go. Now that our register API is ready, let's go to the front end in the user service and have a call to this API. Open the explorer, front end, services, user service. Here after the login function, let's add the register function like this. Here we go. It just gets the register data that has all those email, password, address, and everything inside it. We are going to make an Axios post method because we set because we set our API method to post. 
And after getting the data, we are going to set it as the user and stringified inside the local storage. And we return it out of this function to use it inside the use auth hook. So we need another register function inside the use auth hook. So open the explorer here from the hooks folder. Let's go to the use auth JS. And here after the login function, let's write the register function. Okay, our register function gets the same data, the username, email, password, and everything. And it passes the data to the user service register function that we created seconds ago, gets the user and sets the user to the state of the user that we defined inside the use auth hook. Then if there was no exception, it will show a toast message of success and says register successful. Otherwise, just toast the error coming from the server. Now we just need to give this register to the auth context provider value. Here we go. So now we can go to the register page. Here, first of all, we need to import the use auth hook. Okay, then we need to use it inside the register page component like this now we need to go to our submit function and write this here we are using the auth.register the function that we added to our hook and we are going to pass the data of the form to this register to be submitted on the server but this is not the end here just like the login page we don't want the user to be able to see the register page when he is already logged in for doing this we need to import the use effect from the react and we also need to add use navigate from the react router DOM because we want to verify the user inside the use effect and if it's already logged in we want to navigate the user to the home page so here let's get the user from the authentication hook okay i didn't do it for the register because we already have register from the use form hook so i use the register directly from the auth but for the user we don't have any similar constant so we can use it. Now on the next line, I want to add the use navigate. Okay, const navigate, use navigate. So by calling this function, you can navigate the user to another page. Now we just need to use effect here and do the job inside it. Okay, here inside the use effect, we check if the user is null. We say just return out of this use effect. It means don't navigate it to another page. But if the user is not null, it means the user has value. So it's logged in. We'll check if the return URL is not null. We'll navigate the user to the return URL. Otherwise, we'll navigate it to the home page. Now let's go to the browser and test everything. Let's click on the register. As you can see, we have all the errors. Let's give it the name of test1, test at sign gmail.com, password of 12345, confirm password of 12345. As you can see, that the passwords are not the same. We are going to see this, but if I press five, goes away, because now they are the same. Somewhere like Japan, Tokyo. Let's click on the register. As you can see, it says the register register was successful but as you can see it moved us to the cart page because our return url was slash cart so even the return url works pretty well and the user is already logged in okay it's perfect the register functionality is added to the project you've been watching code with nasir and i hope to see you next time